this isn't, it's not a live feed. We record it and he'll go in and do his, you know, special stuff to it. Work his magic. Work his magic. But, uh, so we're, we're, today we've got uh, Mitch Breeden, A Affordable, and, and Cody. Cody Neef. Cody Neef. With A Affordable, and, and uh, these guys are here local. Mitch, where do you live? I live here in Mansfield. In Mansfield. Yeah. What about you, Cody? I am over at Midlothian. Okay, yeah, cool. It's just right on the road. Yeah, you guys are close. Yeah. Well, awesome. Y'all been here your whole lives? Or? I've been here 21 years. Oh, wow. Where were you before that? Um, Arlington and then North Dallas. Okay. I'm originally from Alabama. Okay, yeah. cool. Roll Tide? Or? Yeah, Roll Tide. <laughs> <laughs> it's been, a sad, it's been a sad month. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> I know, man. What, what's going to happen to that program? I'm not sure. <laughs> they look like they're on top of it, though. Yeah, it'll be interesting. Yeah, I'm always, sure. I've always been a Saban fan. Man. Yeah, same here. Where Where are you from originally? So, ori- I mean, originally Midlothian. So, okay. born and raised there. Um, went off, did some college, and came back. So Sweet. I told myself I would move back to my hometown, but yeah. the wife wanted to. So. Comes back. Yeah, we're back there. So, I All enjoyed right. it, though. Where did you go to school at? I graduated from Texas Tech. Okay. Yeah, that's where I did my undergrad, and... Like I said, after college, moved back to the Grapevine area, which right. that's kind of where I met Mitch at the time. Uh, I was uh, dating a girl in college, and her mom was working for Mitch, and that's how I met Mitch. Sweet. And now uh, now Holly's our CFO, and she's my mother-in-law. Wow. Okay. <laughs> it's funny how, how it all works out. Yeah. We're, we're literally a family over there. So. And Mitch, you're retired, right? <laughs> no, not quite. If it was up to my wife, yes, but I, yeah. I want to go three to five more years, I believe. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Cool. How uh, how long ago did you start getting this going? Getting seven and a half years ago, roughly, oh. on the on the A affordable side. Okay. And for those that don't know, A affordable is boat, RV, motorhome storage facilities. Okay. And we've got uh, what thirty three now. Yes, yeah, so we got thirty three open. Uh, hopefully, mid mid this year, we're gonna have thirty five of them open and uh, going strong. So that's awesome. Awesome. And. Uh, I guess, where, where was the first one? Across the street, before the railroad <laughs> tracks, that little one that was landlocked. Yeah, right over that here. That was our very first one we okay. acquired. Yeah. Yep. And then the, yeah. I don't know, uh, Crowley was the second one out, 1187. Okay. So that one was a that one was a private deal, a little mom-pop deal that yeah. was kind of struggling a little yeah, bit. A lot. Yeah. They had a girl living there with her child, her children. Wow. And we went there, acquired it, and fixed it all up, and cleaned it up, and stayed there a couple of years, and sold it. Okay. Okay. That's yeah. how that got started because uh, Mitch was living here in Mansfield, and uh, we were off up in Arlington, I think, at the time. Yep. And uh, he came in one day and he said, "There's a storage facility." He's like, "We're gonna we're gonna buy this thing." We're like, "Oh, okay." You know, we were we were doing yeah. the contracting company at the time, and uh, he'd always wanted to get into boat and RV storage. And I'll let you tell that story here in a bit. But uh, we drove out. He drove us out here to this one in Mansfield, and he said, "Yeah, I think I want to buy this thing." And we all kind of looked at it. We're like, oh, it's going to need some TLC. And, yeah. Uh, yeah, we ended up getting it, though. And then after that one, we did our first ground-up construction one down in Crowley off 1187 as well. Yeah, that's a, that's a that's a nice one, too. Yeah. So yeah. Okay. That's kind of what blew it up and then sold those two. And I think we haven't sold any since. No. So we've just been growing since then. Yeah, y'all did one, that one in Crowley. Didn't y'all do another one right down the road? Yeah. Like, got we that one up it. and going, sold it, and then did yeah. another one right down the road. I love right. it. Yeah. I love it. So that was uh, that was a fun adventure. That the first one that we did in Crowley, we built it and uh, we got it fully occupied in less than a year. Yeah. And so uh, we looked around to try to expand it, but there was no expansion land to buy. And so that's when Mitch decided to sell it, and uh, we sold it to another group that came in, bought it, and we got through that. It was a little bit of a struggle getting it sold. They had some issues on their side, but uh, you know, we decided that that was such a good site that we'd go down and build another one about. A quarter mile down the road yeah <laughs> so when you when that. you guys sell them there's no there's not a non-compete or anything i mean you guys they, are, did, they it, didn't have one they didn't and, have one and, okay uh, they held up our closing because they couldn't come up with their funds uh-huh. and put a less pendants on the property so when we closed on it i went and opened up across the street hey i so said they, they didn't put a, a non-compete in there but we always yeah. ended up doing it yeah so. okay they, just to kind of sweeten it up for yeah. For, a, for a buyer, I guess, or yeah. well, if they don't, if they don't ask us for it, yeah, we do it. Yeah. yeah. But if we uh, shoot yourself, yeah. So if we go and buy one, which we've acquired, how many over the last couple? Eight or nine. Eight or nine. Yeah. Okay. It was okay. bought and expanded. 
we make sure that if we go and buy one, we, we make sure that's in the contract that they have a non-compete. They've got a non-compete. You know, 10 to 15 miles, something like yeah, that. Okay. I was wondering what the radius would be there. Yeah. Okay. What do, what do you guys prefer? Do you like ground up? Do you like to acquire and, they're, and they're have both some good. outside? Uh, depending on if you can find a really good location that's not in the city limits and uh, get it as close to the city limits as you can. Mm -hmm. and, uh, we try to go in and do our own due diligence and see what markets are growing the fastest in Texas and with mm -hmm. at least a 10% annual growth or 8 to 10% annual growth or above and then do a medium household income of 75 grand and above. Okay. That's kind of the markets we go after. And yeah. uh, we cool. did a business bar. I did a business plan on this 19 years ago and kept it and just decided about seven and a half years ago to get into it. And we've been full bore ever since. Awesome. Does multifamily demographics does that make a difference much, or is it just more of a median income? Multifamily is not really our target. Sure. Uh, tenant base, just because uh, you know those types of people are not. They, they don't have the, the large. The boat and RV store. The boats, yeah. the RVs. That makes sense. Um, for what we do, we have a few facilities that have the traditional self storage. Right. Um, if we have that aspect into a project, then yeah, multifamily is definitely great because those people have right. a lot of things that they Extra. can store. But we we chase a lot just the residential developers. Okay. So these large. Uh, you know, these large developers that go out by a few hundred acres, they start cutting roads. We like to be right around them because yeah. uh, usually they have HOA. H high density stuff. They don't have places to store their boats, RVs. I mean, on their yeah. property. Exactly. You know, yeah. they've, they've got the they've got the income. Obviously, they're buying the toys, and they they're going yeah. they're going to travel. They just don't have a place to put it. That's what. Uh, yeah. The yeah. HOAs are our best friends, and like you said, the high density. Uh, you know, they build big house on little lots. Yeah. So yeah. can't park them on the street, can't fit in a garage or a backyard. So that's where we come in, and that's really what we've targeted. Make, makes sense. Yeah. So, I mean, the ideal piece of property, if you guys could just pick exactly what you want. How many acres in the county? Probably on the low side, seven or eight acres, and on the high side, about 15. Okay. Okay. Yeah, so big, big thing is, yeah. Um, County or ETJ, uh, we don't like to develop in the city limits just with the reason of zoning is zoning is a pain and uh, <laughs> trying to get a boat and RV storage facility zone through any city is not an easy feat. Yeah. So we found just stepping right outside the city limits, um, it's been very advantageous. Sure. Uh, projects go quicker, permitting is a lot easier, uh, design, all, it's just it's just a lot easier and people don't mind to drive a, a few extra miles because usually when they're traveling, right. they're heading out of town anyways. So uh, that's kind of our what we found our sweet spot to be. Um, I guess another question too, when you, let's say you develop, you're developing, I mean, an example, you know, one of the ones I do where we did the transaction with on the land over here yep. with you guys, uh, you know, we had considered doing that in-house. One of the things we we're like, eh, this isn't really our, our deal. You know, let's, let's get with you guys, the folks that know how to do this stuff Been doing it. One of the first things that we ran up against was ingress, egress with TxDOT. You know, they wanted, they wanted to see. Is that something you guys see a lot? Does it just depend on what road you're developing off of? It definitely depends. So the biggest thing that uh, we go on when I go and talk to my civil engineer is, uh, you know, daily trips. And so every time we approach TechStop, we say, look, this is long-term storage. This is not a high volume business. So this is not gonna have hundreds of cars coming each day. Um, I've had to get real creative with TechStop. You know, we've showed them a uh, uh, fully developed out storage facility. We'll show them uh, gate information. So we'll, we'll pull our gate entrance and exit uh, uh, reports and say, look, you know, this is a facility that has 600 units. There's only 20, 20 trips a day. Right. And so just proving all that up to them, it, okay. it definitely helps. Uh, but it's, if you work with them, you just got to really sure. you know, work Play with their game. They would love to see turn lanes and Excel lanes oh, yeah. and medians and all that. But uh, sometimes you just tell them, you know, it's, it's impossible. And you guys got a proven product that is, it works. Yeah. I mean, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a pattern that has worked for you guys with the in and out. I can't argue with that. Yeah. So that's the key is uh, same thing with tech dots always been, um, it's been helpful having the civil engineer that can help with the daily usage um, and then having a personal relationship with all the tech you know, These Each district has their own engineers and be able to pick up the phone and talk through with them. Just pretty much cut through all the bureaucracy. Right. Of, you know, starting at the bottom, work your way all the way up. It's easier to start at the top. So okay. Found, so. Okay. Uh, your, the formula that you guys have come up with, you, I mean, you, you guys are into this long enough now that you've seen, okay, these, these demographics, these markets, we want to get to 50% occupancy, roughly, and then look at another phase, another phase, or yeah. selling 
that particular product? We're, uh, we typically look for about 65 or 70 percent occupancy before we start phase two. Uh, we are, we do have a group, couple groups right now trying to buy nine of our facilities oh, that wow. we're supposed to have LOIs in on today and another one tomorrow or Thursday. Nice. So we're going to probably sell off some of them and then turn around and leverage up and go build and buy some more. Love it. Love it. Uh, mostly just trying to stay Metroplex area Te and then... No. Okay. We're... we're uh, Throughout Texas, we're down in, in Bronzeville, San Marcos, Austin, uh, Georgetown, Liberty Hill. We got one in Alabama, which we'll probably put some more down there. Okay. In South Alabama, down on Gulf Shores and Orange Beach area. Nice. And maybe even into uh, North Florida. Wow, very cool. Okay. I see. I see the pattern there that yep. you guys are <laughs> tracking. It. Yeah. yeah. So we track down that 35 corridor on the interest right. where all the houses are going. It's where all the people are moving. So. Yep. Texas grown as much as it is and I feel like every neighborhood I see going up now it's like we talked about high density neighborhoods so opportunity uh, that's why we kind of track 35 and then uh, Mitch really likes that southern Alabama uh, sure. that area and so do we it's just lots of boats lots of RVs lots of people traveling there for yeah uh, you know playing and so that's what we want to do do some over there too yeah that's a good hub I yep. guess from there to go wherever so yeah all the way from here to South Alabama and maybe the Destin Pensacola area okay in there I told him I want to do it in Miami, but <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you can't go south much out of yeah, Miami. I can go, you can go a little ways, but <laughs> I told him I'd go manage that one. But yeah, we haven't quite got over there yet. Okay, so. yeah, that'd be that'd be cool. That'd be cool. Well, awesome. Um, Clinton, you think of anything? Uh, this is uh, this, it, is, this is interesting to me. And it, it's good stuff, man. I think I have to go buy some land and. Yeah. <laughs> uh, well, that's what we've seen. I mean, just uh, since we started this, I think 2017 was when we bought the one right across the street here. Mm -hmm. And uh, then the one down on Crowley, the first one we did, was probably 2018 sometime. Yeah. I mean, the, the exponential growth of both of these storage facilities, the number of facilities that we've seen open since then, yeah. is uh, it's shocking. I mean, it really is. Uh, TSSA, uh, I mean, the, you know, they picked up on it. It was, a, it was a hot topic for a while, for a few years. You know, a lot of people, COVID was our... COVID was a huge... COVID was just explosive for us. I mean, yeah. we saw growth like no, like sure. never before on people buying. Couldn't do anything stores. except really yep. go to parks or yep. Yeah. And so we saw a lot of uh, facilities pop up and you know, we, we thought about, we're like, man, we, we started this right time. We got started right before all that pandemic. And um, so we like to think that we're the you know, kind of the leader in it as far as, you yeah. know, facility wise, I think square footage wise, we actually just got a report Yesterday, the TSSA emailed us that we're the 35th largest operator in the country as far as square footage goes now. That blows me away because I would expect you guys to be way higher than that. But I guess you look at U Haul and U Haul and, and those guys. And, yeah. and I mean, we're only in te you know, one state, technically sure. two. We have one small facility over in Alabama. But what do we got? A, just shy of 5 million square feet? Something like that. And about 4,500 tenants. So hopefully, between now and the end of next year, we'll. Pretty much double or do a 70 to 80 percent increase but i bet as far as percentage growth wise i bet you guys are killing it i say yeah. it's yeah i mean there's just we're seeing the average growth on our facilities on our product was a couple years ago we were, it was really high i mean we we're seeing you know four to five percent occupancy increase a month at wow. a facility which is i think the industry average was one and a half yeah okay yeah and we're uh our properties are real large we're anywhere from nine acres up to 33 acres so we've got about uh, just shy of 700 acres of commercial land. Wow. Typical amenities you guys offer um, if you're going to go put your fifth wheel in? I mean, we do electricity, dump station where they can dump their gray water, and um, yeah, free air machine as well. Yeah, free air machine. Okay. So the big thing too is uh, when we first started this, is we found out uh, having electrical hookups in each bay. Uh, the first one we built. We didn't do any, right. and we thought, well, maybe we should add that. We had a lot of uh, tenants requesting it, so we put power in one building, and that building filled up in a month. Okay. So we said, well, hey, every facility from now on, now every Just every it. slot has power in it, whether they use it or not, it's there for their okay. you know, convenience. It's included in a rent as well. So are they like twenty, thirty amp hookups or one ten? Okay. Yeah, it's a twenty amp, um, and that's a lot of it's just for charging the sure. batteries. Um, we don't give them quiet enough to live there because yeah. uh, if we did, they probably would try. Yeah, yeah, um, I, 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 hear, I hear you. We, we've only had to run a few people off out of yeah. the thousands of tenants we've had. but That's uh, not bad. It's going to happen. But that, uh, like Mitch mentioned, uh, dump station for the gray water. So if they come back from a trip and they've got a little excess uh, waste that they want to dump, we offer that. 
and then uh, the free air machine. So the, I big, love it. the big thing uh, that we found out too is uh, cameras. I mean, cameras are yeah. You think, every, you think every storage facility has them, but you'd be shocked whenever uh, you, know, you talk to the sheriffs or police, and they're like, yeah, you know. We had something happen at someone else's facility, but they have cameras, but yeah. they, they don't even work. Right. Or they're not monitored or anything, but uh, we actually truly monitor the cameras. So okay. they're, they're monitored by a third-party company that uh, someone breaks in, jumps a fence, anything like that, it gets dispatched to the police. So that's a, that's a really big thing that we've in, incorporated. And, the, I mean, those these people have, I mean, have big investments. Those are large yeah. investments that they're storing over there. They need that security, yeah. so. Yeah. It's another you know good peace of mind to be competitive. Yeah, yeah. some of those motorhomes are million dollars, million three, wow. million four. Yeah, they're all nice ones. Yeah, I mean that that says a lot. And then, yeah, that's why we. Uh, that's why Mitch really want to go with this model, just the strictly boat RV, because the asset's so much more expensive. That you know the likelihood of them missing a payment or a monthly rent right. is much less compared to the mini storage product. Uh, you know, you call someone and say, "Hey, you're two months late on your uh, boat payment for rent." You know, they they get up to date pretty quickly yeah. you, you know send them yeah, a yeah. letter because you know it's something that they had you know usually there's a loan on it uh they don't want to they don't want to lose it they don't want to get auctioned sure. off but the storage facilities that we have <laughs> where we have self-storage you know they'll walk out they'll walk yeah them and they'll leave you their couch and their t-shirts and stuff yeah, like yeah, that. Just, that it's easier for them just to dump yeah. it in there yeah. than go dump it in a dumpster <laughs> yeah <laughs> give you their old furniture and old clothing then yeah. you get to go empty it and put it in your dumpster yeah then you gotta have your dumpster empty so man we don't do a whole lot of mini storage. We're maybe five percent mini storage. The rest is boat, RV, motorhome. Okay. Yeah. I. Uh, so as far as like people making when they when they sign a contract or they 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 start renting from you guys. I mean, it's credit card on file or bank draft. Credit card. ACH. It's their credit card every okay. month. Okay. Okay. So they, they can do both uh, ACH or credit card. Um, we push very heavily not to do uh, written checks anymore. Yeah. If someone's just completely adamant about it. Does anybody it, do we'll checks lie. anymore? <laughs> very few. The only, the only checks we, we still get is uh, from a facility that we had purchased. Yeah. And they've been there for years. And that's they just, just the way they're That's the way they operate. Creature habits. Uh, old school. What's any a, any new check? facility, though. <laughs> what's a check? Yeah. Any brand new facility, though, we, we require a credit card to be on file. And yeah. a lot of that's for you know purposes of, uh, you know, if they damage a building or something like that, that we have some sort of. A payment option on file. Uh, I know. Uh, I mean, old school ways are like <clears throat> we'll get these people. We'll sign a lease, and you can write a check. And hey, you know what? If they don't send a check, then I'm gonna hit them for a late fee. Well, I mean, if you're doing ACH credit cards, there's probably not a whole lot of late fees you see. I would think. Um, well, answer. <laughs> you'd be. So a lot of people just because they have a credit card on file, they don't want the automatic withdrawal. Okay. So you know, people move money around their accounts, but um, I mean, late fees are. Uh, not a bad thing. We actually no. enjoy them. I mean, it's it's an easy way to make a little extra revenue off each tenant, and um, a lot of it is just because they'll you know they'll have a, a credit card on file and say uh, something happens. They they credit uh, wallet gets stolen, so they cancel all their cards. That's one on file. So the next month rent comes up, it pings it. You know, it's not good anymore. So then we got to call them and say, hey, you know, you're a month late because your credit card was bad. And yeah. So they say, well, you know, sorry, I had to get it. Get a new one to replace it, and so that's you know small late fees at five happen. to ten bucks. You know each time that happens, and then same thing. Some people just they like to call and make their payment. Right. They like to call and say, "Hey, run it today." Yeah, uh, they got automatic. paid stuff. So yeah, makes sense. Um, okay, very cool. So over. So you said you got uh, started around the pandemic, the start of the pandemic. So within just a matter of a few years, you're number thirty-five. In seven, about seven years, seven and a half years. Yeah, that's, that's pretty awesome. Yeah, the, the first two, one, the first one was bought in 2017, oh, no, and then the first one was built in 2018. So, I mean, the, the real growth really started in, like, 2019, like that yeah. year before the pandemic, the year before 2020. Next year will be number 15. Yeah. Or 10. Yeah, I, I, I firmly believe you will be top 10 easy. Well, with that's the growth. try. That's, that's our goal. That's big business, but I, I, I feel like you guys are the one that, set the precedence. I mean, I don't do much. I do stuff outside of Texas for our medical company, um, but it's mostly just office stuff. You know, I don't get to see much of the retail or yeah. industrial stuff or warehousing as I do here. And everywhere I go around here that I do that other stuff, I, all I see is A, affordable. Like, Man, that's awesome. Look at we, these and this model, This is cool. We definitely uh, got jump started before anybody else. There's some moms and pops out there trying to catch up with us. There's this one other group trying to catch up with us. Uh, but we're still at this point. I think the leader in this model with the boat RV motorhome. You're yeah. talking about in Texas or the South or 
Just in general. In general. Yeah, yeah. say the, the whole nation. I mean, the, most of the largest operators for boat and RV storage fillage are down here in the southern region. I mean, yeah. it's where... Uh, it's where the weather's are, good. There's not a lot yeah, of salt for them to screw up stuff. Yeah, tra- people are traveling down from the north, so they'll come down here and, and store it and stuff. But Well, you guys have an awesome-looking brand. I mean, that's that red and black, red, black, and white stands yeah. out. I mean, and it's clean. It's just beautiful looking when you drive by it's like why would you not want to put your stuff here and a nice big billboard <laughs> yeah, yeah. So mitch always thought the red was for alabama so that's why we went well, I, yeah red and, red, <laughs> and <gray. laughs> red and gray yeah uh i like to think it was texas tech that's where i went so we hey, settled on red, red, yeah. For yeah. People, red red is common for yeah. sure there yeah that's a big thing though our, our logo was designed by our uh sorry kind of our marketing website design girl we sat down one day and we said you know we need a true like we need a nice logo and we sat there for about two or three days, and she sent us a bunch of options, and this is what kind of stuck. But it's been, it's been. Is, it, is there a significance behind the A A affordable? Is there? No, that's something I thought of. Uh, I think you look back to the old, the old the, days of the. You know, li- made a list of names and okay, yeah. came up with that one. Like that one, the best. Plus, wanted to put it with an A, yeah. beginning with an A. So and there's, already, there's already an, a, an affordable storage. Okay. There's already a guy that had that but name. But A, then you're so in front of affordable. A, yeah. <laughs> so if, you, if everybody got phone books anymore, yeah. I guess we're ahead of them. But. I know my name because it's A-A-A-A-Ron. Yeah. You know, yeah. it's I get to get in front of a lot of yeah. different names, and it Absolutely. bumps it up. So yeah. A, affordable. You, you plug in self-storage did, or yeah. second, plug in boat and RV yeah. storage, you're going to be there top. Yeah, and that's kind of what what we wanted to build is uh, to be known as the boat and RV storage facility operator we want if someone has a boat or rv they know about us that we want that business um, we don't want to compete with the climate controlled you know five-story climate controlled guys we just want to be the people that are known hey if you got a boat or rv you store it there for well it's just it's an industry standard and um, that's what we're really really going for yeah so, i agree anything else is subpar and you're just taking that risk well that's yeah. what we want <laughs> uh, you know we've kind of hit the point of um we've talked to people you know we'll get a TSSA shows or whatever, and uh, you know we'll we'll put up a coming soon sign. We'll buy a piece of property and put up a coming soon sign. And yeah. Two months later, we'll talk to them like, man, I was thinking about doing a boat and RV in you know that town. Yeah. And then they're like, we saw y'all were coming in, so we decided oh, not yeah, to. We're out. So I mean, and that you know that that definitely helps. Sure. Um, being able to have that presence and the size to say, hey, they're going to build a, a very large, very nice facility. Right. So you know, it kind of keeps competition kind of at bay a little bit. Obviously, plenty of room for competition out there. It's a big state, but. Um, yeah. Do you guys get, and we may have already uh, kind of addressed this, is there anybody that calls in that has a mom pop that actually calls and hey, we're, we're ready to retire. We're, we're getting close to, we're done. We don't want to mess with this. You guys are huge. You're coming into this market. Would you guys be interested in, in us? We haven't had anybody come to us like that yet. Uh, we go out and cold call on some of those mom and pops, which is how we acquired our eight or nine. I say we None of them were on the market. Yeah. So, Everyone that we acquired was uh, just... Uh, Mitch and I looking and we found it we're like that's a great facility it looks good it looks like you know a product that we'd like to own and so we'll we'll cold call them and Mitch will go down and try to work out a deal with them directly sure. um, keep keep the brokers un- uninvolved um, we've seen uh, when you get the large brokerage houses involved that uh, you know they're you know they're trying to drive the price up and get the best money for their client yeah. and you know for themselves so um, it just seems to go a lot smoother if uh, there's no broker involved in, in buying and selling a mom and pop store. Absolutely. Store. Well, you can keep it more, yeah. probably a little bit friendlier, and say, yeah. you know, by the way, if if you don't really want to, you know, compete with us, it's gonna, it's it's not gonna end well. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> in a nice way. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> a lot Besides of a broker going saying, if you don't want to sell for a good price, dude, guess what? Yeah. You're gonna build you know? next to you. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and so I mean that is a lot of it. We've. Uh, it just happened that way. We have two facilities that we built right next door Spice to another storage facility. Okay. It's, and it just purely happened that way. Yeah. Uh, the one that I'm mid construction right now is uh, down in the Austin area, and it just worked out that way. That you know, those boat RV storage building, we actually called them first to see if they'd be interested in selling. And, uh, they didn't have any interest. Nice people, but uh, we're like, man, there's a great piece of property right next door that's for sale. Yeah. And so we ended up pulling the trigger on it. Now our uh, our unit mix is a little different than what they're offering. And, mm-hmm. and, and our unit mix we decided to go with was because of what they were offering. So they have uh, more of the covered canopies like we have next door here. Uh, so that one down there, we're doing a, a fully concreted uh, facility with fully enclosed units. So they're 14 okay. foot tall roll up door. Each individual space has their own own door. So kind of a, a different product. So that way, um, is it a higher is it a higher end product? That m- much higher end than a little bit yeah. higher rent yeah, than, uh, right too. Yeah. So the rent definitely is reflecting. Sure. Um, you know, we're looking down there for a fully enclosed unit. You're in your mid three hundreds a month. Okay. Uh, and that's purely from concrete drive aisles, fully enclosed units. 
Um, there's not a there's no gravel anywhere. So there's gotcha. no dust. There's no anything. Does that come up a lot with customers? They come in. Hey, do you got any concrete paved units? I'd really like to not put my million dollar RV sitting on con on the base or. I don't think we've gotten much of that, but okay. but we are now building everything we build is going to be concrete or chip sealed. Okay. Our last two, that one we just opened in Ovilla, North Waxahachie, it's all concrete, all fully enclosed, and it's already like 22 or 23 percent occupied in two months. Wow. And then we're building one in New Bronzeville right now that's about to open. Yeah, it's all concrete. Okay. And yeah, we've seen a lot of the, the fully enclosed units. The Unimax has been uh, really interesting. We have. Uh, I call them small businesses that, like a landscape company or, you know, uh, outdoor living space company that, you know, they don't need a storefront, but they have trucks, they have trailers, they have product. Sure. And so they don't want to just have their product sitting on the trailer outside getting rained on and all the elements, but so they'll, they'll rent a fully enclosed unit from us and that way they keep their tools in there. So they'll bring their tool chest. They can secure it, lock it All up. their stuff, they can, the guys can show up every day, pick it up, haul it, and they can leave their trucks inside, and then whenever they get there at night, they just throw it all in there, shut the door, lock it, and forget about it. It's, it's literally like an extra garage. Yeah, it's their shop. It's a, it's it's a, a shop for them to store. And exactly. How, and big so, are, how big are those? Uh, they're, it's like the one that we just did. They're up to 50 foot in depth, and they're 14 foot wide, so 12 foot wide door. Mm. So it's, you know, a little under 800 square foot on each one of these, which is a, a pretty substantial size. Yeah. Uh, even sometimes when we build these buildings, I'll have people that approach us during mid-construction. They'll say, I want four of them. And so we'll just build the building. We'll take the demising walls out of them. Okay. And that way they have a just... Big square a, shop. A big square shop with four bays. And, okay. you know, they're, they're not paying that high-end, um, you know, flex space rent where, you know, you got your bathrooms, your offices, all that. They're, they're just like, look, we need a space. Um, you know, the guys come, like I said, pick up the trucks in the morning. They head out. Might stop by Quick Trip or something. Sure. Go to the bathroom, get the breakfast, and they go to work all day. And then... Guess what? They come back at the end of the day and throw it all in there, and that's it. That works out well. I know this particular one over here, Mitch. Uh, we talked before. You got kind of like a, a, a car storage with yeah. a, a little shop and yeah. a man a cave. Man yeah. cave in there. I mean, that's a pretty neat yeah. setup. What's that's, something like that rent for? Do y'all do those often, or is this it's kind of about like a two grand, twenty two hundred a month? Okay. And how many cars can you put in there? Six. Wow. And that one. Okay. It's got, uh, Two bays that are two cars deep, and then two single car bays, so six okay. total. And a little man cave. It's got a bar, bar and a little kitchen. It kind of looks like this, actually. Yeah, yeah. 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 I saw yeah. the pictures of it. It's yeah. kind of it's nice. Of, Turned out real nice. I mean, that's pretty sweet. Kind of yes. give you. A, you know, we didn't. Uh, that was done for Mitch. You know, he keeps his personal stuff sure. in there. But uh, you know, it's kind of the same model. There's there's a couple guys out there doing that. Uh, what's I forget. It's like auto Texas, garages or Texas, Texas, Texas garage. garage. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Kind of the same model. I think they're doing really well with that. It's okay. uh, I, I heard good things about one of those. Yeah, but yeah. Um, so there's somebody out there doing that. That was more done for personal use, but sure. Uh, you know, we costly too. We see a lot of people using uh, our full enclosed units, kind of like that. Though. They'll right. keep their car collection in there. Okay. And uh, they'll rent an extra unit to keep their you know tool chest. They'll go out there and work on their cars. You know, do whatever they do. So. I do. I do a lot of industrial warehouse space. And honestly, I mean, if I had. 50,000 square foot of 1,200 square foot spaces, that wouldn't be enough right now. Yeah, really? I mean, it is probably 10 calls a week, and it's guys that are wanting to be away from their house. They want, they've want they got a couple few cars. They want a little shop, a little man garage to go do something. You know, they're not necessarily wanting to pay a lot. You know, yeah. they're wanting to pay you know, $1,000 to $1,500 a month, something like that, just to get away from their house to have something to go, place to go tinker with. Yeah. Oh, the tinker garages. The tinker garages, yeah. yeah. So, well, if uh, you need a, a spot to put those people, we just built a couple of those buildings over Midlothian. So, okay, yeah, they're, they're, we've got them chopped up about 2,100 square foot spot. Okay, and so they're the true flex, you know, real big roll up doors. We're building up office, bathrooms, and stuff for them. So, what are those going to lease for? Uh, about a dollar foot per month. That's okay, like 12 bucks a month, 12 okay. bucks annually. Reasonable, yeah, that's sure. We, you know, I tell that's people, hey, triple the, net, aren't they? the more you rent, the, the cheaper it gets. So, cool. you know, each building's about 21,000 square foot. You know, chopped up into 10 spaces, so it's okay. just shelled, and we get people to come in and want two spaces, one space, three, uh, all kinds of stuff, you know, just kind of whatever their imagination can, you know, figure out, so. Uh, Very cool. Yeah, kind of open. We kind of incorporated that into the storage, kind of feels similar, and we kind of run it the same with, uh, you know, just people storing their stuff is what it is. Like I said, they need tinker garages, so. Yeah. Uh, all right. We can pretty much do whatever we want, so we, we're a general contractor as well, so if we want to. A lot of in-house yeah. stuff. Yeah. 
I know that you guys watching y'all build this. I mean, it was awesome. Yeah. So, man, these guys got <laughs> steel erectors that I've never seen. I mean, it, it's pretty cool. See, they've gotten pretty good at it. That one was, yeah, that one was fun. We've got a, uh, we've got a little bit actual land for some expansion if we want to. Yep. Um, we've got a, well, you know, because you were the, the yep. listing on it, but uh, we've got that flood in the back that I'm not sure what we'll ever do with it. We got the, the guy. You can always do some outside storage. Well, the guy, if yeah, the the next, guy door. The next door, he approached us, but I was like, oh, he's just keeps building back there. Yeah. He's got stuff as far as I can see. As far. Yeah, as that, that guy did. I had that property under contract. Oh, really? It was a personal deal. Mm -hmm. Me and another a partner of mine. We're gonna do exactly that same thing, and some other stuff had happened, and then the other the guy who got it now he did exactly yeah. what we were planning on doing. I was like, yeah. oh man, it's just one of those things. So yeah, and that's what, what uh, happens. Him being next door to us, and so our facilities, we we try not to. Uh, we'll make uh, exceptions every now and then, but we, we try to keep uh, eighteen wheelers, any type of large heavy haul stuff out of facilities, sure. just because it's you got your RV tenants and you got your industrial yeah. tenants. And for some reason, RVers don't enjoy being no. at the same facilities. Um, it's wear and tear on the roads. A lot it's of wear and tear. Cutting across. I mean, they're, they're messing up buildings. Yeah. I mean, that's, yeah. yeah, that's not. So that's why we figured, uh, you know, he can keep all that business and we'll keep the RVers and, you know, both do well because we've sent a few people over to him just because, sure. you know, we, we just, we're not built for these, you know, 18 wheelers and their trailers yeah. and all that stuff. Actually, he, good. he actually came and met with us a couple times. Uh, at yeah. That first one that we acquired yeah. right across here he came and met us about investing with us in okay. the storage business wow but, yeah, that's a good complimentary business i mean yeah. heck yeah. As we told him he said you can buy the floodplain back there and he can keep building but yeah i don't know what happened to that but yeah sorry ground lease it to him yeah it's a thought yeah, yeah. yeah. you don't have to split it up or replat yeah. or do anything yeah. like that good point well, anything else you guys can think of? I really appreciate it. Not that I can think of. We appreciate you having yeah. us. And yeah, beautiful studio, guys. Yeah, yeah, this is amazing. We'll, uh, appreciate you all having us on. Yeah, we'll have to. We'll have to do this again for sure. I might have to go get a loan right now. <laughs> yeah, Henry, you ready? <laughs> Start following you guys. Yeah. yeah, good stuff. All right, very cool. Well, let's. Uh, yeah, we'll try to do this again here sometime in the future. And sure. See if we can't bump that 35, you know, in, top 35 fun, up. Yeah. <laughs> Hopefully we'll be in the top 15 here I, in the next I, 18 or 20 months. I bet I bet you guys will easily. So We're going to get after it. Cool. Well, congrats and <laughs> look forward to it. Yeah, yes, thank sir. you all. We'll talk to you all soon. Appreciate Sounds it. Sounds good. Appreciate right, it. Bye-bye.